Hey everyone, welcome to another Tuesday Tech Tip. Uh, Brett Kelly here, 45 Drives. Um, today we're talking about highly available NFS. Uh, okay, highly available NFS. What is it? Uh, why do we need it? So first, like, what what is it? Um, it is exactly as it sounds. It is a highly available NFS service. Uh, clients connected to one, uh, it fails. Hardware fails, service crash, it fails over to the other one. Of course, you need some sort of some sort of clustered uh, shared um, file system behind it, SFFS. Um, anyway, that's what HA NFS is, highly available NFS. Um, why do we need it? Well, we talk about it all the time with Ceph, how it keeps your data safe and secure and spread across all these nodes, all, and it will persist against node failure and all that. But uh, that's no good if, you're, if, if your clients can't access it, if your single path into it goes down. So that's why you need highly available NFS. So let's go over to my uh, my desk. Uh, we'll do a screen share, and I'll walk you through the the components and pieces you need to configure to have a wonderfully highly available NFS in front of your CephFS cluster. Okay, so let's start with the uh, uh, components we need for highly available NFS. So I've got them in a in this Notepad plus plus window here. So we're going to need a CephFS cluster, and its role is the shared file system. It is the backing storage that the NFS Ganesha server cluster is going to be sharing out. Second component here is NFS Ganesha, and it's going to be used in an active passive mode. And its role is exactly as it sounds. It is doing the NFS sharing. Um, a couple um, specifics about this uh, for uh, NFS Ganesha. We will be using the CephFS uh, Ganesha F cell. That's how it talks to the the modular interface. How it talks directly to the Ceph cluster, um, and we're going to be using the recovery backend called uh, Rados underscore ng. Uh, there's two options. So you can do this one, or you can do uh, uh, Rados cluster, where Rados cluster is an active active um, um, way of using NFS Ganesha with CephFS. However, it is still in mild development and. Uh, um, this is the best way to do uh, failover safely, uh, in particular for VMware ESXi. Uh, the third component that we're using here is we're using a pacemaker chorusing stack. Uh, this is very standard um, service clustering in a Linux environment, and its role will be to cluster the NFS server. So it's going to have a floating IP that we attach to the NFS share at, and it's going to manage the NFS gauge of service on each node. So whoever's active that uh, will be doing all the serving should it fail it'll fail over to another node in the core sync pacemaker um, cluster and it will pick up where it left off um, which leads me on to uh, the fourth component here an actual client uh, to test your failover so in this example we're going to use VMware ESXi um, we're going to create an NFS back data store obviously NFS and um, what we're going to do is when that gets in, I'm going to uh, create a uh, CentOS 7 VM. I've got a script here, HA test, which what it does is just loops forever. It writes a date to the root file system, which is backed by the CephFS NFS share, and reads it out and then loops, waits a second and loops and loops and loops and loops. And the purpose of this test is should failover work um, properly when we fail a node, uh, It'll fail over to the second node. We'll get a slight pause in I.O., 10 to 20 seconds, and it'll pick up before either VMware or the, the um, uh, CentOS VM on top notices that something's wrong. So this should safely be able to uh, fail over with applications. So let's get into it. So uh, component one is CephFS cluster. So I've got one built already. Uh, it's a virtual cluster I have in my lab. Um, not a very big one, just 17 OSDs, a uh, good mix of SSDs and hard drives in there. Um, so I'll just show you right away. I've got NFS set up. I've got no shares, obviously, yet. And I have a file system already. So I have file system CephFS. I've got two pools to it. I've got a hard drive pool and an SSD pool in there. Um, and what we're going to do is move on to the NFS part. So I'm going to run a playbook, which is going to install um, the NFS roles and all its needed dependencies, on, as well as the pacemaker and core sync stack to my NFS gateways. At that point, we're going to come back to this dashboard here. I'm going to create a couple shares, and we're going to go into VMware. So 
Um, I'll pull a terminal over here. I've already got this started, so let's make sure I can ping my um, NFS hosts. So I've got two hosts for now. That'll work. They're there. So let's run this playbook. So we're going to go, no, not Ansible TFG. We're going to call it NFS.yaml. So we're going to sit and let this run for a little bit. Okay, so uh, with the playbook done, we're ready to um, create our NFS shares and bring in NFS. Let me just remote into one of the uh, NFS nodes, just run PCS status and make sure our core sync pacemaker thing is looking correct. There we go. So the NFS one is active right now. Um, Ganesh is running. Ganesha, sorry. Yeah, it's running there. And. Um, IP, here's my floating IP, 1873. So, um, I am going to exit out of here. We're going to go back to the dashboard. I'm going to hit NFS here. I'm going to create a new share. I'm going to add our daemons. So here's my two NFS servers. Um, CephFS is my backend. I'm just going to use admin for now as the CephFS user. Um, NFS root. And we're going to use VMware. I don't want NFS v3. I want to exclusively use 4, and I'm going to call the pseudopath VMware. Uh, no root squash because I'm going to try to mount it as a root user for now. And I'm going to create the export. So, that, so our export's there. Um, now let's, uh, let's hop open to VMware and. All right, so we're in here. So here's uh, an existing one I already had in there, uh, VM. So that's running. So we'll just do this alongside. So new data store, mount NFS data store. We're going to call it um, CephFS NFS. And we're going to call 192.168.18.73. Oh, not three. So this is the floating IP. This is not the IP of either node. This is the floating IP and the pseudopath that we chose there for VMware. And we want to connect NSV4. I don't have a username and password set up, so we can just hit next, finish, and we have ourselves a wonderful new data store. So, um, yeah, we're ready to go. So I'm going to hop over to a virtual machine. I'm going to create and register one, uh, create new one, Linux, Fento 7. Oh, I have to give it a name. So let's call it C7 uh, VCEF for virtual Ceph. Uh, we want to use CephFS NFS. That's the, the one I'm using right now. Or the one we just created. Hit next. Um, I'm just going to give it a little more resources. And give it an ISO that I have stored elsewhere. All right, next, finish. All right, so I'm going to go through this install procedure, but don't worry, we don't have to watch that. That's never really that interesting. Um, so we'll be back. Okay, we'll log into the VM. What's your IP? Uh, SSH. I'm just doing this through Putty so I can cut and copy. Uh, 3.143. Vim Maya H A test dot shush insert. Uh, okay, there we go. So let's start our test. So it's gonna loop like this forever. Actually I don't want to do it on this one, I want to do it on the VMware screen. So I'm gonna close that connect. Actually I want to keep that open, I'll just exit out. So on this side let's go S H J test. So this is gonna loop, loop, loop loop. So what we are going to do now is start this up and I'm going to go to VNFS1. So if I go PCS status or if I look, so Gainch is running here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go PCS cluster. I'm going to simulate uh, failure as if the NFS service stopped running on here. So we're going to say VNFS1. And then so let's keep an eye on the, um, the time incrementing in, um, in VMware. We should see a pause for a little bit and then come back. I 
and there we go you can see we had a difference of about two set about uh, yeah not very long at all uh, and there we go no one got mad VMware didn't kick the data store out CentOS VM kept uh, kept plugging away so highly available NFS let me let me show you to be to be real so if I run status on here it's not running if I go over to the NFS 2 system control status NFS Ganesha and there it is running there there you go highly available NFS lose a node fails over to the other one so CephFS NFS VMware great combination Okay, so that's how you set up a highly available uh, NFS service uh, in front of a ZFS cluster. Um, fun fact for today, you heard me mention in the video NFS Ganesha. What is that? It's, it's a newer, you, you may have seen it on the internet and stuff. It is the latest implementation of the NFS uh, protocol and where Ganesha or Ganesha, I was always confused on what it was, I had to look it up. Ganesha, which is a uh, Hindu god. And um, that is our, the new best way to do NFS now. Um, so uh, there it is. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments at all, as always, leave it below. Twitter, Info45Drives, Instagram, however you want to find us. And, um, ooh, double down on the fun fact today. I discovered something on the weekend. Me and my friend were playing Mario Kart 64. And did you know that if you finish the race going backwards, counts as two wins. So I beat them, and uh, we didn't really find that on Google. So I just wanted to let the world know that that is the best tech tip you'll probably hear from 45 Drives. Thanks again for watching. Uh, see you next week for our next Tuesday tech tip.